So if you're with a woman and you're stuck at that friendly platonic vibe, what can you say to quickly move things to that more intimate flirtatious level that lets her know that you want her, that makes her want you? Rob is gonna share in this video three of his all time most effective ways to do this. Hey, I'm Bobby Rio and I'm here with Rob Judge. And in this video, we're gonna give you three of Rob's favorite ways to move things from friendly platonic to flirtatious intimate. So you wanna kind of give them a little bit of a, uh, kind of set the stage of when you're gonna use the lines that we're gonna talk about in this video. Sure, and the thing about uh, using any of these lines is that you should have already established a little bit of rapport. Again, you don't need a whole lot, but maybe like we're talking like 10 minutes into a date or maybe like a couple minutes into talking to a woman for the first time where she's talking to you, you know, things are going well enough, but now you want to kind of turn it up a notch. And I think any guy who's ever talked to a woman knows that, you know, when you first start talking, things are, are you know, you, you talk pleasantries, small talk, you know, comments on the weather, whatever it is. But, you know, you kind of know in the back of your head, okay, let me let me yeah, turn, turn this up a notch. Yeah, I'm in first gear. I've mm. got to shift down to second gear. Then I got to shift to third gear. These lines are for shifting to that next gear because I know we're always going to get those peep comments of like, if a guy ever walked up to me and said this, we're not saying to walk up to women and mm -hmm. use these. We're talking about you're having a good conversation, but you're stuck in first gear and now it's time to shift down to second or third gear. Or so, shift up to second or third gear. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to put that disclaimer it, it, that these are lines that help you do it and they're really effective. So you want to pay attention. Exactly. And the thing too is that understand that you're going to throw out a compliment like you know, our first line is uh, what's called a shameless compliment, right? Now, it's okay if this is a little disjointed. If it is a little bit non sequitur, you kind of pull this out of nowhere because, again, like Bobby said, you are looking to transition. Again, you shouldn't do this when you first walk up to her. You shouldn't do this in a workplace or anything like that. But if you're on a date with a woman or you're talking to a woman at a party or a girl you just met at the bar, whatever, you can throw out what I like to call a shameless compliment. Now, a shameless compliment, like its name implies, is you have no shame about telling her that you appreciate you know, something that you're, that you're seeing. And the, the reason that this works, again, when most guys compliment a woman, they go with the flowery, troubadour sounding, you're so beautiful, your eyes light up the room. Whatever sort of compliment that you know, you've seen and sound like it came out of like a, a really bad romantic comedy or, or, or romance movie, you're not doing something like that because the reason those compliments don't work is that it just creates this sort of awkward moment. Mm -hmm. The reason that a shameless compliment works is you're essentially saying the same thing. You're saying, you know, you are telling her she's beautiful. You are telling you you like her eyes, but then you're also emphasizing the fact that you're shameless about it. So an example of a shameless compliment would be like, oh man, like the way you look at that dress, you look amazing tonight. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of pissed at you too, because you know, I'm just a guy. Like I came, I came tonight, I was looking to be completely charming, total gentleman, but then you wore this dress and you look amazing. And I'm going to be so distracted. I'm, I'm going to try hard not to be distracted by, by all this, but you know, uh, and again, I'm just a guy. So if I fuck up, if I stutter, if I, if I act like an idiot, like, you know, it's your fault because you look amazing in this dress. Now, again, out of context, it might sound a little ridiculous, but when you actually kind of riff like that in front of a woman, when you're, when you're talking to her and you're telling her, hey, like you look great, like you look amazing in this dress, like, hey, like I'm just a guy, like if I get distracted, it's not my fault. What you're essentially, you know, her reaction, again, I, and, I, and I've done this, you know, dozens and dozens of times on, you know, you know, on you know, numerous dates, and it always gets good reaction because you're essentially telling her something good. You're telling her something that you like about her, but you're also, you know, it's a push-pull thing. It's like you're, you're pulling her in, telling her something you like, but then you're kind of pushing her away by blaming her, by saying, hey, how could you wear this dress? Like, oh, man, I'm going to be so distracted. Mm -hmm. Usually a reaction you're going to get, whether you're funny or not, is she's going to laugh because she's gonna feel a little bit of tension, so she's gonna find this humorous. Yeah, there's a couple of things that make this um, a, a very effective thing. One is that you are breaking rapport. So we talked about that you need to be in rapport, but the problem is, is that when you're in rapport with a woman, right, where you're talking, you're like you're telling her stories about your life and she's telling you stories about your life, there's not that you and me, you and her connection, right? There's not that intimate connection because you're riffing about your friends and you're telling her stories about your, your vacation and she's telling you stories, but at some point it's gotta become about the two of you. Mm. 
And when you do that, it breaks that report a little bit. And a lot of guys are scared to do that, but you have to do that to get to the next level. So the minute you do what Rob just said, use a line like that, you're breaking that rapport, which may feel counterintuitive, but at the same time, it now makes her go, oh, now we're, now we're addressing that this is this flirty thing going on that we are, we're not just trying to pretend that we can have a good conversation. We know we can have a good conversation, but now we're getting to the meat of things that this is more than just a friendly conversation. Um, another thing that does is, and Rob said, is the reason you don't have to be so smooth about this is because it introduces a little bit of a, a, a concept that Rob and I talk of cool vulnerability, where you demonstrate like you are a little like, it's almost like, you know, Rob and I are both introverts. So sometimes we can be kind of awkward in, in when we're trying to explain. And if you try to hide that or try to be cool, it's not attractive. But if you, if you address it, like, listen, like I'm stumbling over my words here because you've got me nervous all of a sudden it becomes a little charming. It becomes a little, a little attractive as opposed to like doing it and trying to ignore it. So a cool vulnerability makes that a little bit more attractive. So that's an excellent point. Exactly. It's almost like, um, anything that you can't control, just own it. You know, and I, I remember I heard that, you know, a long time ago and it's true. It's like Bobby said, it's like, you're setting yourself up. Cause again, I'm almost calling out what I know I'm probably gonna do down the line that could be interpreted as, oh, this guy's awkward. This guy's, this guy's, uh, you know, might, might not be like the most socially savvy guy, but I'm, I'm calling those things out. I'm, I'm preempting that with this shameless compliment so that when I do do those things, um, again, they might still seem a little goofy, but you're taking a little bit of that sting out of it. And, and that's what I think really makes this work. So let's talk about the next way. And remember, these are lines meant to take things to that next level, to let her know, like I, you know, sort of what I said, to bring it to the you and her vibe as opposed to like you telling stories, her telling stories. So mm. let's, let's get into the next one. So the next one is actually very similar to, um, it dovetails nicely with the shameless compliment is uh, a concept I call explicit restraint. Mm. And the idea with this is that a lot of the times we want to state our intentions. We want to say, oh, you know, I mean, if you're going to be honest with yourself, you're looking at a beautiful woman that you just met and you're, you know, it's maybe a half hour into a date or you're, you're talking to her for a while at a party and you do want to kiss her. You do want to make out with her. You know, you have, the, you know, these thoughts have to be going through your head if you're a, you know, red blooded, you know, normal guy. So the, and what a lot of guys do is they try to fight it or they try to, they, you know, or they don't feel very comfortable about expressing it because rightfully so, they, you know, that would be creepy. You said, hey, I want to make out with you. Hey, I want to kiss you right now. She's going to be like, yeah, all right. Like that, that's weird. But, you know, the thing is, is that you can't, like Bobby said, you can't deny the fact that there is that, that attraction. There is that, you know, sort of, you know, polarity that, that is a good thing. So the sort of way to work around that paradox is to introduce this idea of explicit restraint, which is where you say what you want to do. You say, oh man, like, you know, you know, and again, and you should do this, you know, a little bit later on. This should be, you know, yeah. later on into the, the interaction where thing, the thermostat is start, starting to go up. That sexual tension is, is, is starting to, you know, kind of come to a boil where, you know, if you're getting to the point where you're really thinking about, oh, I should kiss this woman, um, you know, you guys are, are kind of a little bit closer in each other's personal space, you could say something like, you know, the way you look at that dress, I'm totally thinking about making out with you right now, but you know, we can't because there's, our friends are over there and what would they think about it? Or I mean, I've, I've used all kinds of crazy excuses. I've said this to girls on dates where I'll say, you know, I'll be in a restaurant and I'll say, oh my God, like, you know, the fact that, you know, you like, you know, this writer or this band or whatever, whatever she said that I, 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 I like, I'm like, all I can think about now is how much I want to make out with you, but I, I can't do that because, you know, there's a family sitting over there and I don't want to like, you know, <laughs> scar these children and put them, put them in therapy with me shamelessly making out with you. So I'm just going to control myself, but just know, like, I'm thinking about it, you know? And, and, and again, once again, a lot of the times the reaction to that is she's going to be laughing, but also too, as she's laughing on the outside, inside, she's thinking about this. Like you, you sort of planted this, this word picture in her mind that now you've introduced this idea that you do want to kiss her, that, that this is, there is like a sexual intent, but at the same time, you're imposing the, res the restraint. When you put that restraint and you say, okay, I want to do this, but I'm not going to because I, you know, I have social acuity. Oh, our friends are here. There's a, the, you know, there's a family over there, whatever it is, you know, I mean, again, I, I, I've blamed all kinds of stuff like, you know, and use your environment. I, I said, yeah. oh, you know, your dog's right over here. I, I don't want to, <laughs> you can, you can even use it in sort of future projecting. I, I was once, um, with a, with a girl on a date and we were talking about playing tennis together at some point. And I'm like, are you gonna wear one of those like tennis skirts? Because I'm like, if you wear one of those tennis skirts, the entire time I'm gonna make a fool of myself playing tennis because I'm just gonna be like thinking, I gotta like kiss this girl. 
And it was just a way to bring that into mm. it. Like, oh, when you're wearing mm. that, one of those little tennis skirts, because we were at the point where like, I needed to say something to take things to that yes. next level. Yeah. Because we're, we, it was going into like, oh, let's play tennis. And I was gonna be her tennis, I don't wanna be her tennis buddy. Yeah. So I gotta immediately, I go, how can I get not be her tennis buddy? I'll bring up that. So think in terms of you're at this level, you know you've gotta get to the next level. So address it, but then when you take it away, like I couldn't play tennis with you. Cause she's like, oh, we should go play tennis. I'm like, I can't play tennis with you because if you show up in one of those tennis skirts, I'm gonna wanna just walk across the thing and take you like, yeah. and, you're, and you're, you're disqualifying. You're not actually, you're not saying I'm gonna do it. You're saying I can't do that because I would wanna do this, but you're essentially saying that's what I wanna do. Exactly, and that creates so much sexual tension because it's sort of like the forbidden fruit. And again, you're putting that restraint in. So, th- you know, that's an incredibly effective um, technique. And again, you, you, I just wanna emphasize again, you wanna do this, you know, a little bit down the line. Yeah. You know, obviously you don't walk up to a woman and say, hey, oh, I was just gonna make it out with you, but I'm not gonna do it because there's a, family of penguins over there who might, you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Doing. And again, and your excuse can be a little off the wall, a little cartoonish because the idea is that like, you, she should be laughing when you're saying this. She should be, she should be joking around with you. She should be, you know, kind of, but again, as she's laughing, you'll notice the wheels are turning in her head. Now, the third and the final idea, you know, line that you can use to increase sexual attention to kind of take it to that next level is you can actually turn, sort of flip the script on, flip the script and actually blame her for something. And again, you do this playfully, but if she says something or, and and a lot of times I like to do this when a a woman um, pumps the brakes, right? Like where she'll be like, she'll kind of shit test me about something. She'll be like, you know, make, you know, she'll make fun of me. She'll make fun of my jacket, you know, or, or, you know, make fun of my hair or or something. And I'd be like, well, you would say that because, you know, uh, you know, girls who wear, say she's wearing like hoop earrings, I'll, you know, pick whatever out, something about her, something, you know, she has her hair in a ponytail. Girls with uh, ponytails are evil anyway, so you would say that. Yeah. You know, so what you do is you interpret something about her and then you assign it, a, you know, a, a quality of like, you know, and again, it, it should be something playful, something I, I, I used to like, I used to love using the term evil for girls I just met. And I would, I would use it for anything. It doesn't even have to really totally connect or make sense. Um, I remember um, say to girls at bars, you know, and again, and this is something you can use very early on. A girl would be holding a drink and I'd be like, oh, Oh man, I heard girls who drink Cosmos are are, uh, are nothing but trouble. You know, something like that. And now it's like the thing is that these lines sound kind of goofy, but the idea is you're starting this interaction. You're inter- you're you're interjecting a vibe that is going to be playful. That's going to be fun. It's not hey. How are you doing? What are you drinking? What are you doing here tonight? Which is where most guys, you know, yeah. most guys go about trying to meet women or, or, or talk to women on dates. They go about it at a logical level, and that's not fun. That's not good. And 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 essentially, the, and the reason that like fun is so important in the vibe is that when you're having fun, you're actually projecting your real personality. When you're just like, you know, sitting there asking your logical questions you're essentially acting like you would in, a, in an interview. And in a job interview, you're not really projecting your true, like natural personality. You're projecting this sort of like, you know, weird, neutered sense of yourself, which is what you don't want to do when you're, when you're attracting women. Yeah, and at some point, as we said in the very beginning, you've got to bring it to you and her, how you see her, how she sees you, because that's really where chemistry happens. It's not when you're, you know, even if you're telling the most funny story in the world about one of your friends and this, this really, you know, story that just have as they're laughing, it's still not about you and her. So going back to this idea that Rob mentioned about explicit restraint, and if she tells you um, she's a teacher or whatever she tells you, right? Again, anything she gives you, you can find a way to bring it. My dad told me never hook up with a teacher. One piece of advice my dad gave me is like, you never hook up with yeah. whatever, what is she doing? And she goes, why, why, like, why does your dad yeah. say that? I said, I don't know, but my dad just has like a six. <laughs> and now like, it's, it's about you and her. It's, it's this funny, playful vibe. So everything you're doing is like, when we say it makes her want you, it's not like you delivering any of the lines that Rob just said is like, she's like, oh my God, that was such a good line. It breaks that like formality and now it mm. creates intimacy. And when you're in that intimate level with a woman, it feels good, right? Like, like think about it when you've been with a woman and she says something like that, imagine if she's like, oh, like, imagine if you're like a, a computer programmer. She's like, computer programmers are trouble. You're immediately going to know, even though she's saying you're trouble, you're immediately going to know like, oh, like this is a little flirty This, this thing. is fun. This is flirty. Yeah. This is fun. Yeah. That's what these lines do is they bring it to that flirty, fun, playful level, right? We call it like the flirty, funny, touchy, feely level. And that's where the magic happens. That's where the chemistry mm-hmm. happens. And that's where it's easy to go for the kiss, to say, hey, let's go back to my house and let's go, like, 
you're not going to get there if you're having a serious conversation. So if this um, idea of this flirty, funny, touchy, feely sort of vibe does not come naturally to you because it didn't come naturally to Rob, it didn't come naturally to me, um, we put together a collection of a lot of these techniques, right? Things like, um, and, and, and ways to do it in various situations. When you're first meeting her, when you're out on a date, maybe you've gotten her back to your place and you're hanging out, but now you're like, shoot, I've got to like bring it back because you always need to be conscious of like, okay, I've got to bring it back. Because sometimes let's say you, you get back to your place with a woman and your, your excuse is like, Hey, I want to show you this video on TikTok." And then now you show her that video. And now that the, the conversation piece is that video, you've got to find a way to bring it back. So even saying something like, yo, I can see you making a video. Like, like, you, <laughs> yeah. like you'll be fine. Like, now it's you and her again, and that's where the attraction takes place. So again, if, if this doesn't come naturally to you, we've got a lot and a lot, a lot of these kind of techniques. You can download them all below. And um, if you like this video, hit like, subscribe to the channel, and leave us a comment and let us know what you want to see us cover in future videos.